everyone and welcome to the chat and vibe series for the vitality festival which starts on october the 31st it's an amazing free nine day health and well-being festival which is all being run online and we've got 70 amazing world-class leading speakers in the health and wellness field and one of those incredible speakers we have here today is Simon Madden. How are you today, Simon? Uh, Tanya, thank you very much. Lovely to see you. I'm very well. And this, uh, in, I'm in uh, Melbourne, of course. So in this strange and uh, interesting world, I'm doing all right. I normally say to people that I was crazy beforehand and the wheels just changed to fit me. So that's fine. <laughs> that's good as gold. I love that. I think I might have to use that one, actually. That's uh, brilliant. Good. Oh, and Simon, tell us a little bit about your background, how you got to becoming you. Oh, gee, have you got, have you got enough time? Um, I, I, uh, a young fellow growing up in Airport West, suburb in, uh, in Essendon. Uh, my father died when I was 13. Uh, older brother, Paul, was 14 and a half. Younger brother, Justin, was 10. Working class family. Um, dad, dad did two packets of uh, Viscount a day, turf, Craven A. Died of a heart attack mowing the lawn. Um, and I'm older now than he was 56. He was an ex-serviceman and I'm older than he, he is. So I, uh, I look after myself. I don't smoke and I don't mow lawns just to make sure. You just never know, never know that. So started there, um, went to the local Catholic primary school, uh, secondary school, then teachers college, became a teacher, uh, played, uh, played a lot of football for Essendon, uh, then moved out of teaching into the world of business. Uh, small, medium, large, national, international, and then for the last uh, 12 years, my own, and became, I suppose, called the business coach. Uh, I am a facilitator, coach, speaker. Um, and it was because I was, uh, I had a lot of experience. I've had some really good experience of leadership and some really good experience of bad leadership. And, um, and so I got to a situation where I was in between jobs and had a few options. And someone said to me, you should be a business coach. And I said, why? He went da 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 da, and so you're doing. It. Went, yeah, and I was tired of working for people who I didn't really see as good leaders at that stage. So I, um, you start with a nebulous idea, as I say, and you shape it into this. And so I deal with I deal with uh, individuals, groups, uh, leaders, and cultures on uh, what I call sustainable high performance. Simply how to get good, how to get good and stay good. And a lot of people are a little bit worried about the uh, high performance. Oh, I've got to do something special and I've got to be bigger and better. It's about understanding yourself and your situation and, and linking those two together in, in ways and means of uh, getting the best out of you in that situation. So I work, I've been doing that now for 10 years and love it. I think, I think it's the parent, the teacher, the sports person in me that actually enjoys seeing people improve and being part of that process to see them improve. So uh, yeah, so that's what I've been doing now. And it's, um, and it's part of that. I call what I talk business personal coaching uh, because when you do uh, when you talk about business coaching, you're always talking about someone's life as well. So there's there's this overlap, of course, and um, and I, I like to t make sure people understand how to ha the things they can do, and of course that is one of one of those things. Is of course the health, both the, uh, the four parts of uh, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health uh, that makes up. Uh, their life and uh, the, you know that helps hopefully if they get all that right they can actually have a good good life that uh, is uh, fulfilling and gets the best out of them and I love that I love how you're incorporating the mental emotional the physical you know, all those different pillars because I think that's really important a lot of people are talking about holistic health and I think what one thing that everybody's really agreeing on is that you can focus on one thing just the physical just the emotional but really need to look at all aspects of ourselves if we're really going to reach the best version of ourselves. Well, look, I totally agree. And they're all, all linked. And it's, um, you know, the endorphins that produce from exercise are also produced from laughter, uh, also produced uh, from uh, mating as well. <laughs> all these good uh, feel vibes. So you've got to understand it's not just about running around or just doing exercise. It's about meditation and, 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 and spirituality is part of it too. And, and some people are religious and some people are not, and that's okay. And there's no judgment there. It's about, but how do you see your spirituality? So uh, when we're, when we're uh, in, I'm going to talk about uh, when we're doing our, well, not when I'm doing my thing at the festival, um, I'll be talking about uh, the five, five parts of um, uh, mental health resilience. And, it's, uh, one, two, and it is one, two, three, four, five. And I won't go into it now because it's going to be a bit longer, but I'll give a little hint. And the four is those four parts of your health. 
physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, but there's a few other things. I'll keep you, just keep you interested in, uh, in that. And yeah. I, I, I've, I've, I've found that over time. And I, and I think it's because of my um, football background too, that you know, when you play at a high level, you actually, you actually learn that the game, the football at that high level, actually tests you physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And um, I'll talk a little bit about that on the festival too. So yeah, so it's good. So I try and um, I can't run around the footy field like I used to. I don't know if you know. This is uh, I'll just saying this is um, my COVID lockdown beard. Um, COVID I, cover. COVID cover. I decided it was funny. You know those things. I thought somebody, some some great person. I think someone once said, you know, in lockdown you should nurture something or make something grow. I said I kill plants. I haven't got a pet at the moment, so I'll just grow and nurture this. And luckily I've trimmed it because I said, I'll just keep growing it while we're in lockdown. And if I had not trimmed it, it'd be down by my knee, down around my knees now, because I've been here so long. <laughs> <laughs> it has, it yeah, has. So, so, but anyway, yeah, so I'm, I'm nurturing, I'm nurturing a beard for COVID. So I'm trying to pick the right time. When, it's, when we're out of lockdown, the right time, it'll come off. But uh, at the moment, it's, it's still there. Yeah. And I love, you know, in one of our previous chats, you were telling me about, you know, your football career and how so much of what you're moving with at the moment has come from that basis of um, being part of a team, being part of a group. Um, you know, that high performance you've spoken even just before about um, if you want to be your best self, if you want to get somewhere different, it's really important to be committed, be committed to what you want and be persistent in terms of showing up for yourself. Can you just maybe talk a little bit to that? Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, I've always said to people, and what I've found through going through sport, because I, I, I was 16 and I was at school when I started, so it's really unusual. I was at playing um, year 11 football, so football at school in year 11 and then played for Essendon on the weekend. So, you know, it's, it's very, un, it's very uh, different, very unusual. So, uh, my, and then I played for 19 years, so my life is shaped in that. And without a, without a father figure, my whole lot, lot of my um, life was influenced by male figures in, in, in sport, of course. So, but I was really, really understood that you couldn't get anywhere uh, without others. Mm. And there's a beautiful term of, beautiful uh, term I've, I've sort of picked up along the way recently is this South African tribal term called Ubuntu. And I thought it's fantastic because the best translation is I am because we are. And I think that's, and I think it's lovely. It just, it sits with me really well, but I, I think it's really important that, um, you are, you know, you are your best resource, but that doesn't mean you're your only resource. I mean, you really do need everybody else around you, and that's in a, in a, in a, in a sporting uh, in a sporting context, team sport context. You need the coach, you need the trainers, you need the other players, specialist coaches. But in the end, you are your main resource, and so you've got to look at that. And a lot of, and I know mothers, mothers are very good at at looking after everybody else and putting themselves, you know, putting themselves last. And I know a lot of people in. In, in lockdown in, in, in the COVID era have been, you know, worried about other people. And, but we do know that a lot of people, they're, they're struggling and they don't show it. And I know with a whole lot of, you know, you think of all the frontline workers who are right out there in people's faces and people are in their face at time, that they are trying to look after other people and we forget about looking after ourselves as our main resource. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be superhuman. And the other thing too is really important that you, you're actually... Um, you, you, you're not nobody. Nobody's perfect. Apart from you and me, Tanya, nobody's perfect, right? And sometimes I worry about you. <laughs> <laughs> but look, nobody's perfect, and we've got to acknowledge that. And and you know, you can look at a failure um, as just a failure or a learning experience. And there's nothing wrong with making mistakes. The trouble is, if you keep doing the same thing and keep making the same mistake and expect a different result, that's you know, that's called stupidity, actually. But we sometimes we beat ourselves over the head too much and too hard. And I've always said, look, don't, don't be hard on yourself. There's always someone, a boss or a partner or, or you know, somebody else to be hard on you. Don't be soft on yourself. There'll be an uncle or an auntie who'll rub your shoulder and go, oh, you're okay. Just be honest with yourself. And if you're honest with yourself and really honest with yourself, um, you can actually make good decisions, I think, about yourself. And so that's really important that we, we and I think a lot of times it is, it is, I won't go into how the mind works, but you, it's much easier to be negative than positive. It's very easy to feel to fall into a negative mindset, and I know in the sporting world, people people standing in the outer pointing. The easiest thing to do is if they miss the goal, they miss the mark, bang, they're straight away into negative, rather than going, oh no, you know, working around the positive. Oh, we've made a mistake. We work off it. We'll get better. We learn from it. And I think it's really important that we, especially in this time, uh, make sure we look after ourselves and make sure that we. Um, we really understand that we can look after ourselves and we are our best resource. That's fantastic advice. I think 
the people. And I think this this notion of I am, we are is really important, which was really you know, part of the impetus behind why we're putting this event on because so many people are feeling separate right now. Yes. But really, you know, together we can do a lot of things and there's a lot of people out there who are offering help like we are with the festival. But, you know, we have all our friends and family and I think it's really important that we all need to learn to connect in, ask for help, um, and like you said, be really honest with you know where we're at at the moment. Yeah, and and look, and, and I you know I think too is that part of you know I, it's fu it's funny how I, you know, have a lot of these meetings of course having a lot of online meetings. It's interesting to see people in their own house. I mean, this is my office, my study at you know my study at home, but to see them you know with a beard or with longer hair because they can't cut it or they haven't put their shirt on, they've got their t-shirt. It's all good. It's all you know we're being a bit more authentic. And you know, and I, I, I can remember my first uh, Zoom meeting and a, a lovely bloke, and it was his first Zoom meeting. All of a sudden, the door come, you know, pushing open, and two kids come running in and all over him, and and he said, "I'm oh, sorry about that." I said, oh, "No, I've got I've got four of them. They're all grown up now, and I've just got a just got a grand a, a grand, our first grandson. I understand all that, and that's fine. And and that authentic self, and I know and that's a term that can be really overused. I think people just throw authentic out there. And they're not authentic about it, but yeah. just being you. And, and one of the great things I know with, with um, the sporting teams is when you get to know people, when you connect with them, you actually see more than them as just in the sport. You mm -hmm. see them outside what their family's like, their friends, their, their other interests, their other, their other strengths. And I know in the workplace that um, when you get to know people outside the workplace, as in where they live, what they do, you know, you know what movies they like, what music they like, uh, what's their interests? You know, those things you actually make a stronger connection with people. So, you know, I think one of the things about uh, you know, what, always is you've got to look at you know, there's every every cloud has a silver lining, or every out of every bad situation gets some good. I think with COVID, a lot of people have actually shown their more, um, you know, the more authentic self, and I think mm. that's been great. And I think the other thing is that most of our authentic selves are going to get apart from you and you and me. Too, most of our authentic selves aren't perfect. And it's just that we, we've got to try and get closer to our best. And if we get to perfect, that'll be great. I'm not quite there yet, I'll be honest. I'm not quite there yet. But working towards understanding that, yeah, we've got flaws. Everybody's got flaws. But we try and work on making them better. And, re, and look, you know, we understand in this situation, um, the world's not fair. You know, let's, the world's not fair. But we can all work on making it a little bit fairer. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of people have been doing that. You know, you know people have, unfortunately, people have had... Um, family members pass away and they can't go to the funeral. You know, mm. um, it's just really, really hard on people. But there are other people around them giving them support, even if it's just over the line, if it's a letter, if it's a phone call, if it's a, you know, on our, are you okay day, even a simple phone call, things like that. We can actually work on making it a little bit fairer for each other. And I think that's really, really important. Mm. And I think it's really amazing how people have just learnt to adapt in this time. You know, like you were saying, you, you know, sometimes I was doing an interview with, someone the other day and their kid came in. I mean, what can you do? I think everybody's le had to learn to be a little bit more adaptable and, yeah. and flexible with what's going on in their world, what's going on in their life. And you know, I think we've all had challenges during this time. But it's really important to be able to adapt to what's going on in front of you because, you know, you can only butt your head up against a closed door and some of us have literally got closed doors and you can yeah. only do that for a while until you have to sort of look and say, well, how can I come at this from a different way? How can I yeah. change my perspective? How can I bend a little bit so this can still work out? No, look, that's great. And it, uh, Darwin's, theory, Darwin's theory of evolution, it's not the strongest that survive. It's those that are most uh, adaptable to change. And that's, mm -hmm. what's, that's what's happened over the, the, the history and the course of the world. So people who have been able to be, uh, you know, a little, uh, be able to adapt, a little bit agile. Now, that old word, agile, and it's not my body anymore being agile, but that <laughs> agile, be able to, to adapt to that situation is really, really important. And I think um, I've, I've been uh, part of my sanity has been doing some uh, actually painting, as in my art painting, but painting rooms in the house. So I've been over to Bunnings a couple of times, and I'm... I'm a lot of people love Bunnings, right? And my wife loves Bunnings. She, she's quite happy to go there, shop like a supermarket. She'd rather she'd rather go to Bunnings. But how they've adapted, and so you can order online, you know. So he, he, we all, and apparently their profits have gone up. They've been very good. Mm. But you you know you order online, um, and then they send you a text to say you come and pick it up, and you drive in. You got your mask on. Everybody's, and they go in. You show them the order. They use, and it comes out, and you said it's still shopping, 
and it's still those things we want, but it's been adapted for that, you know. And I know the got a, a great friend who's got a um, little coffee shop up the road in where I am, and they've they've lucky enough to have windows at the front that open up, so they've just adapted all their all their food to being taken away. But because of that window, that's become the counter. You know, little things like that where people go, okay, and remember, it's not what happens to you, it's how, it's, it's how you react to it. Mm. And that's the thing about, if it's, you know, if this happened, the fact is, you can't change this, right? Um, we, can, we can argue with, you know, are we still in lockdown, we shouldn't be and all that, you know, people can argue that. But the fact is, there, there is this situation, COVID-19. So it's not what happens, you go, well, okay, how am I going to deal with this? What am I going to do? And that's, I learned that game from my, my, my football days when I had my form went like this, and I ended up on the bench in the seconds and, um, and people saying, because I've had a good career so far to then. I remember saying to myself, well, um, people at the club have a different view of my ability than what I have. And so rather being nasty in point, I can remember saying to myself, well, what am I going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? How am I going to react to it? So this is a situation, how am I going to react to it? And so I, um, I'd already won two best and first before then. I can remember young people do this and I was a young person once. I'm going to win the best and fairest next year, which is a bit game because you could get injured or whatever. But basically what I said was I will, um, uh, I'll get myself fit enough, strong enough in the right presence of mind to be, to possibly win the best and fairest the next year. And I did, I won it that next year, the year after, and then got in a winning premiership and then won a Norm Smith medal. Uh, and you know, that's a lovely pat on the back, but for me, it was a real sense of, and this is where I talk about you being young, it's a, it's a real sense for me of, yes, I can be in control. There's a situation, I couldn't change where I was, but I could change the future. What could I do to the future? A bit worried then I'm starting to do a Donald Trump. Perfect, I was perfect, I was perfect. So, sorry about that. I got, just, I've, been told, I've been told the right, the, the, you know, right protocol for these top members, don't worry your big, hand, big broken hands around in front of the camera. They're, they're a distraction, but I talk with my hands. There must be, I'm a, a Madden up probably was Medino or, Italian background or something, a great orator in Italy years ago. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a case a case of really understanding what the situation is and then saying, what can I do about it? And I think really important, you know, we're talking about this um, this festival is that, okay, our people are under pressure. People, people are, um, are worried, etc. So that's the situation. I can't necessarily change the situation. Well, how can I, as you said, how can I adapt? What can I change? What can I do? How can I see it? What, what's the positive I can get out of it? What's the plus I can get out of it? No, and, and then, and also, John, one of the things I've tried to do is just, re- and I've worked out, who haven't I seen this year that I would have run, run into? So I've, you know, started to ring people and say, oh, I have, you know, I, wouldn't have, I would have seen that person three times. Ring up and say hello. You know, just little things of adapting and keeping connecting are, are, are really important. Fantastic. Really, really great advice. I can't wait to hear your talk. Simon's going to be talking at the festival on five steps to building mental health resilience. And you can already see from what you've heard today, he's got some amazing um, qualities and skills that he can teach you in terms of learning to be resilient and adapting to what's going on. So thank you so much, Simon, for being present with us today. Oh, look, great to be here. Remember, it's it's the old story. Resilience starts with, and it's a, um, it's not it's not in it's not in never getting knocked down. It's in getting up that's really important. And uh, we'll leave it. We'll leave that with a little gem of information. I'll pinch off somebody else. Okay. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Tanya. Good on you. Bye.